Tzolaim Tzovim to everybody. And uh, we are now uh, just before, well, two weeks before Pesach. And um, this Shabbat is a very special Shabbat, the Shabbat um, of Pashat HaChodesh, uh, also a unique Shabbat, because not only do we read Pashat HaChodesh, but we, uh, like every single um, uh, two Shabbatot prior to Pesach, but it's also uh, Shabbat Rosh Chodesh. So, uh, yeah, it's a very special Shabbat that we read three, three Sifrei Torah. Um, in Pashat uh, HaChodesh, we read about, um, first of all, that Moshe Rabbeinu tells the Jewish people that from now on, uh, the month of Nisan, because this is um, the beginning of our, uh, as a Yom Huledet, as a birthday as a people. So from now on, Rosh Chodesh is going to be, Nisan is going to be the first of the month. And then what the, um, the, the reading of the Torah is that Moshe Rabbeinu on the 10th of the month, um, he tells the, the Jewish people that they have to make preparations for um, taking a Paschal lamb and that they have to shecht it in a certain way, that it has to be eaten in a certain way, it has to be only tzli'esh, in other words, roasted. And amongst the, the instructions for their generations on how to eat the Korban Pesach, the Torah tells us that um, it says that you have to eat the Korban Pesach that, um, with your belts already on you. And it says that you're, you have to be wearing your shoes. While you're eating with one hand, you have to have also your staff and your stick, which is, uh, which is going to help you to um, emerge out of Mitzrayim, to walk out of Mitzrayim. And then to sum it all up, it says, you have to eat it in haste. It's a Korban Pesach that you have to do for the sake of Hashem. And what is amazing about this thing, that first of all, you know, usually when we eat, um, when we shech the Korban, let's say the Kohanim, and then they eat at the Korban, they have to eat it, they're eating it in Yerushalayim, eating it, well, you're eating, uh, usually a korban is eaten by the koanim, and it's eaten in the, the confines of the Beit HaMikdash, and there, you dafka weren't allowed to wear shoes. And here it's saying that the prerequisite for eating the, the korban Pesach at the time of Yetzirah Mitzrayim was that you had to have shoes, and um, you had to be totally uh, prepared to like um, emerge from Mitzrayim at a minute's notice. Um so what is so incredible about this is that despite this warning that the Jewish people were told up front <laughs> that they're going to have to hit the Korban Pesach, and that Korban Pesach is going to be on the eve of them going out of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. In other words, they shechted it on the 14th, then they dabbed um, the blood a little bit on their doorposts, within the doorposts, that only they could see it, not someone from the, uh, the outside. That was a schut for them. And then they had to eat it. And um, despite the fact that now Hashem warned them and told the people that, you know what, you must eat it in haste, you could see that the Jewish people were still taken by surprise. And so much so were they taken by surprise at the turn of the events that that's why we eat matzah. We eat matzah because the Jewish people had to run out in such a haste so they didn't have char, a, a chance even to, to make the matzot. They wanted originally to um, either to make matzot or they wanted to make it chametz. And then with all the tumult, they had to take it out. And during the way, they had to make it into, uh, they had to, had to make it into matzah. But what does it go to tell us? It goes to tell us that um, when it comes to great events, uh, we can prepare, etc. But you know what? We're never quite ready. We can never wait actually for the ideal time because there isn't a real ideal time. Okay, there are times which are more ideal, less ideal, but there isn't the perfect time that we're waiting for. And this attests to it that even at this perfect time, Leil Shemurim, the night where Hashem's been waiting all these um, hundreds and hundreds of years to bring about the exodus from Egypt. And Hashem warns the people and tells them, and this is how it's going to be, and you have to be ready. They weren't ready. So that is an amazing, amazing, an amazing concept. When you look, for example, 
at uh, just let's look at our modern history from a collective point of view. When was Medinat Yisrael founded? Under, most, under the most adverse conditions, not under the best condition. It was not perfect time. The Jewish people were reeling from the Holocaust. The Jewish people had no time to purchase arms, to organize, to set up things. It, it, it's unbelievable. They were told, the Jewish people, as if HaKadosh Baruch Hu now, to use an expression from Shira Shirim, which Rav Soloveitchik always used to, um, used to quote, Hashem was knocking at the door. The time, a uh, historical moment has come now for the Jewish people to come back and to establish Medinat Yisrael. And we did it without being ready. We didn't have arms. We didn't have economy. We didn't have anything which was organized. That is the story of Jewish history collectively. And that is the story of an individual as well. Uh, we've been learning Rav Tzadok on Sunday nights, and this is what Tzadok said. Rav Tzadok says that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu appeared to the Jewish people suddenly and told them that they have to go out in haste, we look at it as if it was a one-time historical event that the Jews had to go out in haste because if they wouldn't, then the last, we were on the 49th level of Tumah. If we would have stayed for a little bit longer, all of our Jewishness would have been lost. But actually, Rav Tzadok says, no, that's not, a, the Pshat is not that it's a one-off. A person has got moments of ins inspiration. And Rav Tzadok says, when those moments of inspiration come, just like it was in Mitzrayim, a person has to jump in, a person has to leap in. Afterwards, he'll <laughs> try to settle things. He mustn't think to himself, oh, you know what, I'm not ready. It's not according to my, uh, my, 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 my Draga. This is something that a person doesn't do. In fact, this is how I conclude. This is how the Seder starts off. When we say the 15, um, the 15 Simanim, we start off saying Kadesh Rechatz. Kadesh means sanctify. Rechatz means clean, right? It's referring to the Natilia the dime that we have before Karpas. That's a very, very, uh, it's a very, very interesting thing. When we say Kadesh Rechatz, we're saying that, you know what, on the night of the Seder, on the night when the Jewish people were created as a whole and came out of Mitzrayim and HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us a new neshama. So we weren't on the level that we had done Rechatz first. We turned it around. Hashem changed the order and the chronology around. He knew that we weren't ready. And he said, don't worry. You're not clean. But you know what? Kadesh, sanctify yourselves. Now bring the Korban Pesach. Now emerge from Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Afterwards, we'll count 49 days. We'll help you. Then you can do the Rechitzah. Then you can do the, the washing. And then you'll be ready for Matan Torah. But this is the, the great message of Chodesh uh, Hazel This Chodesh, this very Chodesh, is the Chodesh which belongs to you. Never worry that we're not 100% ready because we aren't ever ready 100%. And Hashem pushes us uh, to, achieve, um, to achieve greatness. Shabbat shalom and Chodesh Tov Lekulam.